welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys for stopping in today because I have an epic extreme room makeover video planned for today and this time we are going to be tackling my living room. As usual, there's going to be a ton of thrifting, antiquing, DIYing, and I also have a really fun project and sponsorship with Cricut that we're going to be doing together later on in the video. I am just super stoked to show you everything and to take you guys along this journey with me. So first I'm gonna show you guys what we're starting with, the before, and then we will jump right in to all of the projects, all of the thrifting, and putting this space together. So here is our living room and all of its awkwardly spaced glory. <laughs> we have a giant radiator, which is something I've really never lived with before. So we kind of had to configure the couch in a way that worked best with that. And then our very makeshift entertainment center over here. This is actually our old coffee table, which I don't really feel like is going to fit in this space. So we're definitely looking for some new um, furniture pieces in here to kind of complete everything. It's pretty just boring and blah right now, but I think adding a bit of color, some texture, a couple new furniture pieces will really make the difference here and make it look a lot more homey. You can see we've definitely not really moved much stuff in yet, so it is a work in progress, but that is the name of the game, I guess, when you move. We also have an awkward coat closet here so it's a little bit difficult you can't really put anything over there maybe something you can kind of move out of the way since we don't really utilize it that frequently but it's definitely some challenges to work through in terms of the spacing of everything and then over here is really my absolute favorite part of the house i don't know that i'm going to change much about this except for maybe just decluttering and moving all of our boxes and things like that that we haven't moved yet but I plan on making this a really big plant ledge here. I love our table that we got on Facebook Marketplace. I really love our round mirror here. So a lot of that stuff will be staying, but I just want to put the finishing touches on it. Now for my favorite part of these room makeover videos, going thrifting and antiquing for all the stuff that we're gonna put inside. Now, I do already have a bunch of things just because I've been working on this room for so long and we've been living in our place for five months now. And I also just have a lot of stuff that I am reusing from our last place. I'm keeping our couch. I ended up buying like a vintage chair before we ever moved. So I do have a lot of the larger item pieces, but I'm still down to look for a lot of good filler items. And um, I know I'm looking for like a lamp for the corner. I'm just gonna be open to whatever I find. So I am parked in one of my favorite areas to antique in in st louis it's on cherokee ave so there's a ton of just vintage and antique stores today and i'm just going to be going around to a bunch of them and taking you guys with me i also have my friend in town chelsea she's actually visiting from nashville and so i'm just going to take her around and we're going to do lots of antiquing she just moved into a new place so i know you're looking for a couple pieces too so yeah. it'll be a win-win situation so we're gonna have fun we just passed the um vintage store that we're going to it's called or antique store called So Jeff Retro, and there was a full-on band, yeah. band playing in in this store. So I think it's gonna be a good time. Let's go do it. Let's go antiquing. Ooh, look at this cat I just met. He's so cute. Hi. This booth is insanely gorgeous. These are like textiles. 
some sort of rug. Oh my gosh, it's $1,100 though. I love this vintage frosted Ikea lamp, but I need something bigger for the corner of the room. So I found this vintage brass vase, and it's really cool because it's like a tri-color, which I've never seen before. I love the shape of it. I bought a dried flower bouquet that I think would look really good in this. I love this chair. This barrel chair, that'd be good for a living room. I think Chelsea and I are gonna get little matching figurines. We'll be <laughs> bonded for life by our matching figurines. These are really cool, they were made in Kenya. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna get the gray one. You're gonna get the, cheers. <laughs> Chelsea and I are trying to figure out where I could possibly put these tiny lamps in my house. There's a set of two of them and they're only $10 each. I love them, but I have no place to put them. <laughs> you need it. Do you think it'll fit in your Subaru? Probably. You can just like put the head out the the back or yeah, something. Just the seats down. Yeah. Got it. Done. I really like these two chrome mid-century prints. So I'm gonna see if Derek likes them. I really like this lamp. It's a mid-century. I was thinking about putting on the side table that I have next to the couch. I love the base of it. I think I'm gonna get this kind of irregular shaped walnut tray for the coffee table. It's good just catch all tray, put, you know, little things that collect on the table. So it just looks a little bit more organized, but I think it's a good price for $20. Oh wait, wait, I'm obsessed with this. <gasps> Guys, wait, I've been looking for a, something exactly like this and it's only three dollars taking her. Three dollars! Oh, wow. Doesn't this look like kind of the candelabra yeah, I was looking for? Amazing! Three dollars! You never know what you're gonna find when you nope. go thrifting. <laughs> okay, but actually I do really like this candle thing and I'm scared of the mouse. I feel like this would look really good on the radiator. I'm really digging this booth and I love this lamp. So I'm really highly considering getting this lamp for my side table. It's exactly what I wanted, it's very 70s. I think it'll go well with the other light fixtures that I've picked up for the room and I love the modern like feel of it. Um, it's an actual 70s lamp, so I just need to make sure that it works. It's very heavy though. finding nothing at this Goodwill and then look, I just found the perfect lamp. I almost bought that lamp for like $145. I still love it, but this one is much more affordable. 
at $6 and it's like the perfect little squiggle. I think I'm gonna end up doing a little DIY on it because I don't love the silver. I might end up like painting that, but I love it. It has this like cool mid-century uh, lampshade. I also found a random other lampshade for another lamp in my house, but I'm very stoked on this find and to pay $6 instead of $145. So I just got back from picking up a bunch of really good Facebook Marketplace finds. I found these two ladies that just resell all of this like West Elm and Pottery Barn. They have a bunch of different stuff, furniture, light fixtures, accessories, and everything is like super discounted, but I found some incredible pieces for the room. So I'm gonna show them to you right now. This is the light fixture I found for the living room. I wanted something that was kind of mid-century modern and would provide a lot of ambiance with the shade so this will drop down some from the ceiling and i got this for 80 dollars. it's on west elm right now for 500 dollars. so i know 80 dollars like kind of seems like a high ticket uh item but those are kind of the pieces that i'm willing to invest in we can take them to other homes when we you know move out of our rental place here but I cannot believe I got such a steal on this and it feels really high quality. And then we have a really large window in this living room. So I want to put up some curtains. I needed a really long curtain rod and I found this one on her page. It's hard to show you the whole thing because it's really long, but it's like a mid-century wood curtain rod. So I got this for $50 and it originally was 110 on their website. So that is everything I picked up from her on Facebook Marketplace and I think they're really going to make this space look super high end. Another day, another Facebook Marketplace find. It's basically where I've pretty much gotten most of my larger pieces for the living room and today I'm picking up this faux green marble plant stand. I've been looking for a plant stand for quite some time so I could add a little bit of height in different areas of the room and I think that it'll be nice to display a plant on. So I just arrived at the location and we're gonna go get my faux marble plant stand. So today I am at Ikea because I'm going to be picking up two pieces that will help me complete my entertainment system for the living room. This is probably the biggest project that I will take on for the entire room and it's really going to be like the statement DIY piece and thankfully the pieces I need just came back into stock. First we assembled two Ikea Ivor cabinets per their instructions and that went about as good as expected. Perfect. Never have a man do a woman's job, is what they say. We assembled just the bodies of the cabinets, leaving the doors off for the next part of this DIY. So I picked up a couple items from Home Depot and we're gonna get started on part one of making over the credenza. Here are my inspiration images for the project. The main feature I wanted was some sort of cutout in the doors with caning, so I ended up going with this option with the arched cutouts. So we need to draw the arches on the doors, but first I'm just taking off these wood bumpers. I measured a two inch border inside the doors as my cutting parameter, and then I marked the middle of the tops and bottoms of the doors where I wanted the middle of the arches to hit. I tried a couple different methods for drawing my arches, but the string tied to a pencil trend seemed to work the best for me. So now that I have the arches drawn on all of my doors, I am going to start the process of using my jigsaw to cut them out. I'm a little bit nervous because obviously if I mess it up then I don't have any other backup doors. So I have thought through this process and I think what I'm going to try on the first one is to start the cut with my circular saw here where there's a straight edge and then I will finish out the remainder of the arch with my jigsaw because I really want to keep the integrity of this inlay so that I could potentially use these fun you know arches for another project in the future pray for me because we all know my history with saws and power tools in general is not the greatest so 
the circular saw did not work. So my plan B is to drill a hole on the side of the arch now where I can insert my jigsaw to cut out the inlay. Here is my door. Is it perfect? No, but that's why I bought sanding blocks so that I can sand this down and hopefully even it a little bit. I think overall the arches look pretty good. I think it just needs to be like touched up in a few areas where it's not super straight, but nothing a sander cannot fix. I just have to do it three more times now. Last one. I'm honestly like, Pretty happy that's over. But look how amazing it turned out. I then polished the doors off by sanding the arches. Now that our doors are prepped, we're gonna move on to attaching the two eyebrow cabinets together. With a large drill bit, I drilled six holes into the sides of the cabinets and then screwed in these quarter inch screws and secured with six nuts. You know what this project needs? A little Drake intermission. I picked up six of these legs on Amazon and attached them to the base of my entertainment center by putting two on the ends and two in the center. Now that everything is assembled, I'm going to paint the body of the cabinets and the doors black. Now we're going to be adding the cane webbing that I purchased online. I cut out four pieces to add to the doors. You're going to want to soak your cane, but if your bearded dragon is in your sink, you can soak the cane for 20 minutes in lukewarm water in your tub. This helps the cane become more malleable and will apply without any wrinkles. I finished each door by stapling the caning to the backs of the doors using a staple gun. I have my first door complete. It's kind of crazy seeing my full vision come to life. I'm honestly pretty proud of myself. Then I just installed the doors onto the cabinets and my entertainment system was complete. So my next DIY is one I've been looking forward to for so long. It's in collaboration with Cricut. If you don't know about Cricut, they are an amazing cutting machine that can cut anything from vinyl to wood to leather. And today we're going to be using vinyl to be making some decals to put on this mirror I thrifted many years ago. We're going to be revamping it, giving it a new modern look to fit in my new living room. So here is my thrifted mirror that we're going to be adding the vinyl decals to as well as some other fun upgrades that we're going to be giving to it. And I'm going to start off by just cleaning up the mirror some, giving it a fresh coat of paint. I really like the black frame, but it has accumulated a couple scratches over the years. So I just had this leftover black paint and I'm going to touch up the frame and clean the surface to prep for adding our vinyl decals. So now that my mirror is all prepped, we can move on to making our vinyl decals and I'm going to be using the Cricut Maker 3 cutting machine to make my decals. It can be used for so many different types of projects and it comes with a bunch of these little tools to help make all your projects. It's also really easy to set up. You just plug it in, turn it on, and you're ready to start creating. So probably my favorite thing about using my new Cricut machine is their design studio app because they have a ton of pre-made designs in the app that you can choose from for your projects, but you can also upload your own designs for more original creations. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm gonna to upload one of my own designs that I made into the Design Studio app. I went ahead and drew out just two different sized abstract leaves and then two different little like blobs is what I'm calling them. And I'll be layering the blobs under the leaves for a cool layered effect on the mirror. So then I just uploaded the designs to the Design Studio app, adjusted their size, and then it was time to send it off to my Cricut machine to cut them out. I'm going to be using the Cricut Smart Vinyl in black and white for my designs. You just load it into the machine and then it automatically cuts out your entire project. I turned off the excess vinyl to use for a future project and then cut out my designs. I added my designs to the transfer tape with my scraper tool and now they're ready to apply to my mirror. All right, now for the part I'm most excited about, which is actually applying the decals onto the mirror. So I think what I'm going to do is place the smaller circle here with the leaf and then the bigger sort of blob there with my smaller leaf. So again, I'll use the scraper tool to apply all the decals to the mirror for a smooth application. And then I'm going to layer my black leaves over the white blobs. Thank you. 
Here is the mirror with the shapes all layered up. I love how it turned out, the colors the shapes, the layering. So one last thing that I wanna to add to this mirror are lights. I know you're probably like, don't you have enough lights already? No, the answer is never enough lights. They add so much moodiness. So I picked up some LED strip lights that have a little remote control. You can change the colors. I love LED lights because they're super inexpensive and just add so much ambiance to a room. So we're just going to quickly put those on the back of the mirror so it'll be like shining from the back of the mirror. It's gonna look awesome. Let me just show you how I'm gonna do it and then I will style up the finalized product with all the Cricut vinyl decals on the mirror and the lights. It's gonna look amazing. So these are the LED strip lights I got on Amazon. It's a huge roll and you can cut it to whatever desired length and it has this handy dandy remote control that you can change all of like the patterns and the colors. It's super cool and really inexpensive. So I'm just going to be placing it on the back of the uh, frame of the mirror. And there you have it. With a couple easy steps with Cricut, I was able to completely transform this mirror into something super unique, which I love. I love those special touches in a space, and I love that Cricut allows you to do that. This is such an easy project for anybody. If you have a Cricut, I highly recommend to just get a little bit creative. You can even go to the thrift store and find things that you could put vinyl decals on. Now that I'm almost done with this room, I am ready to think about all my new projects I'm going to do with them. I am really looking forward to doing some like holiday sort of cutouts and maybe give some gifts with my Cricut machine. So I'm really looking forward to all the things I can create with it in the future. But for now, I'm really loving how this turned out and I feel like it just adds a personalized touch to this mirror that I've had for so long. So thanks again Cricut for sponsoring this video. If you guys want to try out Cricut machine or see what kind of products they have, I link them all in the description box below. Finally, today is the day that we are replacing the boob lights. Yes! I cannot be more excited to replace this hideous boob light. I hate it so much. We're gonna install the new fun West Elm light and um, hopefully I don't get electrocuted. Let's get rid of this. Part where I don't know what I'm doing and I just figure it out. Boob light be gone! And good riddance to you, boob light. Now we just hook it up. It's pretty easy actually. It's just as simple as matching up the color. So if you can do that, you'll be golden. I swear there's always something that has to go wrong whenever I fix a light fixture. And this one is just very different than anyone I've ever seen. Um, so I'm just winging it, which is a great thing to do when you're working with electricity. I did it! I was about to have an emotional breakdown because lots of things have not gone well today, but I did it. Just kidding. Oh my god. Uh, it looks great. It really looks great. Does it work? We're about to find out. It's working! Ooh, do party lights. Ooh. Ah. For today's project, we are going to be installing my curtain rods that I picked up on Facebook Marketplace. These are a double curtain rod, so I have two curtains I'm going to be putting up. I have these sheer sort of linen ones that will be in the back, 
and then I have these velvet kind of burnt orange curtains that used to be in our bedroom in Nashville and they fit the color scheme of the room so well that I decided to reuse them for this space so those will go at the front I think this is gonna add a little more color to this space since I'm not gonna be painting the walls the only thing I'm concerned about is installing them into our very hard plaster walls these walls are super super hard and crumbly so I think this is going to be a little bit of a process I think it's probably gonna take me longer than I think it is so please send me all your good vibes while I install these curtains things did in fact already go wrong the curtain rod holder has to slide over the bracket and I was just thinking I would slide it up and then I realized I can't slide it up because then the um, holders will just slide right out of the bracket. So I just spent all that time making all my marks and for what? All right, I got so frustrated putting them up and it took me two and a half hours to get these babies up but I think it looks pretty good I had to get very creative with the middle part because they were sagging if I didn't put something to hold it up but I literally couldn't get the curtain rod holder to go into the wall the plaster was just like not today so I ended up just taking some screw hooks that we had and I put them into the ceiling and then I got some yarn and tied the curtain rods to the hooks to give it support from the ceiling since the ceiling isn't plaster probably not the way that I would advise you guys to do it but it was literally the only way that I could get these up and I think it works so here are the layered curtains. I steamed them so they look really nice, wrinkle free. I think they look really good. We're just not gonna talk about this. So we're back in my little entryway to the living room and this space is very strangely set up so I really think I want to kind of distinguish the entryway from our couch to kind of help make this area a little bit more distinguished than the living room I want to do some sort of painting project with this I actually really like the color that we have now it's just kind of like an oatmeal color so I thought about doing a couple different like paint projects on my little plant wall here I thought about doing an arch or maybe just like painting this one area but I finally found this one image on Pinterest that I was like obsessed with and that I knew that I had to recreate it doesn't take a ton of time or paint and I think it's really going to make this very much so stand out amidst everything else in the room I'm going to paint around the window frame and just like frame it but it's gonna have this cool weavy pattern to it and this is just going to be my little template so that i can make sure all my waves are the same size so this paint is bare but the color is from sherman williams it's called sierra redwood it's kind of a reddish rust sort of color i'm going to start off by just drawing where i want my waves to be and getting that set up and then i'll go in with painting the inside and then we'll finish up with all of the fine details i have a very tiny little brush i think it might be a little bit of a challenge but i'm always up for a good challenge so first I just measured a two inch frame around the entire windowsill before I added all of my curves.
chunky. I feel like it fits with all of like the curves that I'm going to put in this room. This took me quite a long time and I had to have a very steady hand, especially at the top here, but I did it. It's 11.30 p.m. on a Friday and I'm about to go to bed because that was exhausting. But I think it looks amazing and I'm really excited to see how the rest of the room turns out. So we're in my very fall backyard, all the leaves have dropped and it's kind of very magical, but that's besides the point. Today I'm going to be spray painting the lamp that I got at the Goodwill. It has a wood base and then this silver like neck and I just want to paint it a matte black. So I just picked up some matte black spray paint. I already taped off the areas that I don't want to get spray paint on and this should be a really quick little upcycle but I think it's going to be really effective. This just is not my style. The shape is amazing but I don't love the colors so I think black will go a lot better with the rest of the room. Here is my finished lamp with the black spray paint. I went ahead and added the shade back on. I really like it. I feel like it looks a lot more like kind of a vintage Scandinavian sort of a design. It also has just a super cozy glow with the lampshade. So I'm really excited to add this one to the space and I love how it turned out. So I got this really nice brass vase from a local antique store and I'm going to make a little dried flower arrangement in my new brass vessel. Don't know what I'm doing, but I'm hoping that that adds to the whimsical effect that I'm going for. of this video and I'm just so excited. I live for the last day when we can see everything come together. As you can probably see, I have all of my finds and my projects all in my house and we're going to be installing everything, styling everything up and we're finally gonna get a look at the finalized living room. I'm so excited to see this together with you guys because I haven't even seen it come together yet and I've just been working so hard on this and trying to make you know this new home that we live in feel like us and I'm just I'm already so proud of it and I'm so excited for you guys to see it so thanks for coming along this journey so without further ado let's finally install this living room
All right guys, it's time for the final reveal of my living room makeover. I hope you love it. I just wanna sit down on the couch, have a cup of coffee and enjoy the coziness of this space and just revel in all of my hard work. I mean, I'm just speechless because I think it looks so good. So here we go, the final room reveal. Facebook Marketplace, DIY, painted, and everything in between. Honestly, I'm just so proud of this space. I don't know if I'm ever gonna leave my home. It's so good. And I'm always just honored to take you guys along on these journeys because that is truly what they are. I really wanna stress at the end of these videos that I was not born a DIYer and I am usually like figuring it out on the go watching other YouTube tutorials but I think the biggest thing to take from all of this is that if you have no experience I'm telling you you can totally do it I didn't know how to do so many of these things and I really doubted my capabilities but as you can see I think I did a pretty good job even though I didn't have all that experience behind me so don't be afraid to try something new if you're not experienced at it you will eventually be and you could probably create some amazing things so until the next room makeover I will see you guys bye